Hello again. Some days I try to make time for some shopping before I start working. I have about an hour or so to spare today. So I found myself a little birch. And I'm going to utilize the slope it stands in. I'm not sure if it shows that much on camera, but I stand downhill from the tree a little bit now. And I'm gonna try and fell it with a very short stump, as short as possible. Owen Jarvis just suggested adding this to the cordwood challenge. He suggested bigger trees, 8 inch and up. This is only 7, but it'll have to do for my first try. I think he was talking about 5 or 6 inch high stumps. Yeah, that's very low. But I'm gonna give it my best and see how it turns out. Six inches. That's about down here. Nice sitting down on the job for once. <laughs> Well, depending on what side I measure from, it's either at five now or three. It's gonna be a pretty low stump. Waste no wood here. That's dead anyway. I think I'm gonna be able to leave that if I'm careful. Not that it's a prime specimen or anything, but I'll try nonetheless. in the trees. It's not that badly stuck. I was anticipating to get a little bit of snag up in the spruces. But it was leaning so heavily to that side I could have fell it anywhere else. What a pretty stump. Maybe I'll clean cut it, if nothing else, to play a little joke on Glen Urquhart. <laughs> It's about 10 inches up here now at uh, the back cut. The face cut is low. I'm not sure. Maybe I should be more careful with the back cut. I'm not sure if this would count in Owen's book or not. Anyway, clean it up a bit. Just because I have nothing better to do with my time. Well now it's shorter, but if the objective with this would be not wasting wood with the felling, I guess leaving it 10 inches high on the back cut side wouldn't qualify anyway. I don't know, it's just the first test. I'll try to do the back cut a little bit lower next time. But now I have some birch to Back and split. This is a hazardous situation. Maybe we should take a closer look at that. You notice the angles of the cuts and where my feet are. So when I try to put in a split in the log to start 
my buck splitting. There's a real chance I don't actually hit the tip, but go on the side and glance and what do you know? That's my chin. That's the other one. So doing this maybe isn't the best idea. Especially if you use all the power you have. Can't do that here. Take it a bit easy and also I don't shop so it goes straight into the end of the log. I, I shop so it comes from above. If I was to miss the chance is that the axe will go into the ground before it hits my foot. So I stand back a bit and chop from above. If I would stand closer to the end of the log and try to hit it directly on the end, the risk is higher if I miss that I end up in an accident. I'm not sure if this could be referred to as an accident, it's just the result of stupid behavior, perhaps. So uh, I do it like this. And I don't cut with all the force I have. I take it a bit easy to maintain more control of the axe. This is where it would help to have a cheekier axe than I have. This Rinaldi has a very thin blade. If I had something with a little bit of cheekier profile, with a wider angle, it would be easier to split out the fire logs. I'm gonna do it with this anyway, because this is the axe I have with me today. A little bit more of a crack would have been preferable. Glen Urquhart shops a lot of birch in cold temperatures. But I live in the middle part of Sweden. We have the Gulf Stream and it's about 7 degrees Celsius today, so I'm not going to be able to try this on frozen birch until next winter comes. As expected it's pretty stringy down close to the stump, I think I'm gonna use the first ones as sleeper logs. Another advantage with felling small size trees, you can lift them if you need to. It is a pretty tall order. The split ran out a bit on the far side and this thin blade doesn't split that effectively either. And it only weighs two and a half pounds. So I think I'm going to put in a secondary crack in this. Maybe this isn't so much a secondary crack as me actually just hewing off a piece. <laughs>
a little bit of work on the low part of the trunk. I think the sap has started rising. I'm just gonna split and stack it as fast as possible. Seven degrees and the polyester jacket. Yeah, fun times. We're now leaving the stringer part of the bottom, getting up to more straight grain convenient country. I was just in a conversation in the comments to my previous videos with uh, Bush League 3274 I think his username is. I don't know what your name is, sorry. We were talking about, or he was talking about uh, the crack running out to the sides when you do this on birch. I have noticed it before as well, I just thought my aim was off but this hit was dead in the center and it still runs off to the side a bit. I'm still not sure what to think about that. Maybe I'll just try to hit as much in the center as possible and uh, cope with a little bit of run out. So I'll chop away on this side first, put the secondary horizontal crack in on the other side and do two pieces or something with that. Come on then. Thank you. Everyone was waiting. Nice to have a little sleeper log underneath so you can go with full power straight down. I'm about to enter the trees now. I can do a few 
more lengths, then I'll have to pull it out of there. One to the left and one to the right. Well, that's two quick pieces, I guess. bit better. Still runs out to this side though. I'm not sure how we spoke about this run out but his impression of it was that it was worse when the birch wasn't frozen. I can't really test that theory until next winter not gonna have any more frozen trees to fell now. There you go. <sighs> well, as you can see, standing back a bit and cutting down rather than straight on to the end of the log. It's pretty helpful when you miss your mark and the log isn't that wide. Those two that ran off to the side, totally okay for firewood, but if I'd have been standing closer, chopping like that, at least one of my legs would probably have been made out of wood in the future as well. I don't want that. Putting the crack in like this though I feel pretty safe. Ah. Another one. That's a new trick, haven't tried that before. It's a bit on the heavy side. Probably quite a lot of sap in it already. Or maybe I'm just not strong enough. Bit of both, I'm sure. Let's continue. I still get a lot of run out to the sides when I try to put a crack in.
I do believe Glenn Urquhart suggested doing these bucking cuts at once and not doing a crack. Maybe it's better on frozen birch and with a cheekier axe that splits out chips better. But I'm going to try and cut them like that straight away without splitting the end first. Or maybe I just misinterpreted him totally. I don't know. I'm going to try it anyway. Now it runs out like that instead. Yeah, would have preferred a slightly larger piece than that. That's better. It's a nice crack that runs straight from the heart, straight along. I don't know why the first one ran out. I'm gonna try it one more time. There's that run out again. And the next one is really good instead. Maybe a slight V notch to start with would uh, help. Right, one more time with a V notch this time. Ideally, I shouldn't have to do more than that. It's better. Not perfect, but definitely better. I guess you could say I get good amount of variation in the, the thickness of the wood. Some smaller pieces when I start and the biggest ones on the other side from where I start. That's what I'm getting now. I think it seems to be fairly consistent. But what do I know? I haven't done this much before. Bucking from the log without splitting, it's really new to me. I'm getting up to where the branches are now. So Clean it up a bit. Right, another V notch, making it a little bit deeper this time. Five cuts, including the notch. That's okay, I guess, for Someone who doesn't have a lifetime of experience from this. Three cuts and a kick. <laughs> Does kicks count? I don't know. Larger notch still, I think. Starting to crack already. Missed my notch. Well, three cuts. It splits really nicely now 
when I'm up a bit on the trunk. Ah, we're supposed to hit the sleeper log, not the dirt. We'll put the sleeper log in the right position then. Stupid. I'm shopping from downhill now. Don't ask me why, I just sort of ended up here. Get back here. That was a fairly big knot on this side, that's why it didn't split off, I think. And now the sleeper log is in the wrong place again. There we go. Better. Two nice knots, one on each side. Easily remedied. That's nice. If you want to look at your wood shopping from a recreational point of view, you have a sort of a window from a, after you get away from the stringer piece of the bottom section and until you get up to where all the branches are. Now I don't do this purely for recreation. I enjoy it as well, but of course I do it to make firewood for next winter. I'm just trying to say it was very nice shopping, that piece in between, with straight grain and no branches.
forks now when I'm coming closer to the top or tops I guess I should say I think I'm gonna leave the rest of the tops for now and just take care of what I already have here. I think I'm gonna bring a smaller hatchet someday. I've left quite a few aspen tops also from before. So I'm probably gonna do that. Bring a hatchet and perhaps a bill hook. I'm not gonna lie to you just to appear more industrious than I actually am. I started little birch pile here next to my aspen pile and I already brought a bit of the newly cut wood here but the battery died on me shooting that. Maybe you can see the lighter color of the new wood from here and up. And what's underneath about half of the stack I guess that was here before. That's another small tree that I didn't shoot when I processed. I just took a couple of stills and put them on the Axe Cordwood Challenge group on Facebook. Anyway, it's stacking up quickly, tree by tree. That's it for this time, another birch felled, buck split and stacked with the help of the Rinaldi America, two and a half pound head. So I guess this is another one tree challenge for the axe cord wood challenge then. I wasn't aiming for it, I just wanted to try and fell a tree with a really low stump and also make some more firewood in the process. I noticed the problem with uh, the crack running out to the sides of the trunk. I'm not sure if it's different if the birch is frozen, but I thought it helped not making the crack at all and just starting the bucking cut off with a small notch. So I'm gonna keep doing that until I find out something that works better. If you have any other ideas, I'd like to hear about them. I'd like to try this with a cheekier axe too. The blade on this Rinaldi axe is very thin, so it doesn't really pop chips that effectively. Right now I don't have a good axe with uh, enough weight, handle length and uh, cheek meat on it. Is that even a proper term? Cheek meat? Well, perhaps now it is. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And uh, before you know it, I will be back with a new one. Until then, take care when you use your axe in the forest or anywhere else for that matter. <laughs>